All right, hi everybody. Today I am going to explain the mechanics of the forehand loop. This is a stroke that is dominant in the professional table tennis community, and it makes for those exciting rallies that we all love to see. I'm going to explain how we do the forehand loop versus topspin. So underspin will be a separate video, and this week will only be on continuous forehand looping versus topspin. I'm gonna break the loop down into three essential parts. These three are stroke, timing, and recovery. To learn the basics, let's go talk to my good friend, Brian Wu. Brian is a US rated 2200 and above player. He's played for NCTTA, the Collegiate Nationals, multiple times now, and he is a fellow teammate of mine at UT Austin. And we've competed together for the past three years, and we're the same graduating class, 2021, hook em. Anyway, Brian has one of the loudest cracking forehands in the Metroplex, and this is one of his best shots, so you can definitely trust him on this one. Let's go check out Brian's forehand stroke. First, let's talk about the stance. Your left foot and right foot should form approximately a 90 degree angle so that your left foot is pointing in the direction that you want to hit. And your left foot should be one foot to half a foot ahead or above your right foot, which allows you to transfer your weight from back to front as well as from right to left. Notice how Brian shifts his weight very well throughout his body, from his lower half to his upper body. He recovers after shifting his weight onto his left foot by using his left weight as an anchor to push him back into position for the next loop. His arm swing follows the path of the ball and doesn't make any unnecessary back swings. Track the ball and hit it depending on how high or deep it is. Make sure to catch the ball in your sweet spot, which is directly above your right knee. Focus on grabbing the ball while you loop. Next, let's talk about timing. Looping is all about the sequence of relaxing and flexing your body. Everything before you touch the ball, which is considered your backswing, should be completely relaxed. You should only flex briefly upon contact with the ball, and you should accelerate both your body and your arm. This would be called the forswing. So timing of this explosive instantaneous acceleration is critical for generating power and spin. Watch in the video how Brian and I are completely relaxed before we touch the ball, but we accelerate extremely quickly upon contact. When practicing your forehand loop, you wanna focus on consistency. We often practice cross court because it's the longest distance on the table and it gives you the most time to recover and make a quality shot. If you want to loop like Brian, you need to make sure to control your acceleration to be exactly when you touch the ball. Otherwise, you'll end up being late or early, which causes you to hit the edge of your paddle. Brian really excels at the two things we've covered so far. He generates power from his legs and his body rotation, and he also has excellent timing in his acceleration. He wouldn't be able to inject this much pace into the ball that he is in the video without those two strengths. It's also important to have variation in your loop. Brian is demonstrating here that he has a slower, spinnier loop variation that can be used against extremely consistent blockers. You want to loop consistently until you can find the right ball to put away. This clip demonstrates a rapid speed forehand loop. 
This can be really effective against players where you want to push their tempos. Players that play slow and spinny games often can't react to a high frequency loop. If you're a lefty, you can follow the same mechanics that you would for a righty. Instead, it's just the mirror image, so you'd shift your weight from left foot to right foot, just like my guest star Samuel Tao is doing, up and coming junior national team member. Just kidding, but maybe someday. It's also good to practice a straight down the line loop because these are good in matches because it gives the opponent less time to react and is difficult to adjust to on the fly. Note that this drill is harder because you also have to react to the shorter distance on the table. The mechanics of a down the line loop are very similar and almost identical to a cross court loop. You just need to shift your body position to be more perpendicular to the table and aim towards that shorter corner. Lastly, let's talk about recovery. Recovery is the footwork part of the forehand loop technique. You have to simultaneously relax your upper body and your arms while moving into position to hit the next ball. After you've transferred your weight from your right foot to your left foot, use your left foot to push back as an anchor to get back into position for the next loop. This pushback will aid in your recovery time Make sure not to kill your partner if you're blocking for them. So you can notice that when I'm blocking for Brian, I'm keeping the ball in the center of the forehand court and then in the center of the backhand court. That way he doesn't have to move insane distances. Another drill to work on recovery is called two thirds table random forehand, where your partner can block anywhere two thirds on the table and you must receive it by forehand looping. A tip for this drill is to watch the path of the ball as soon as it leaves your partner's paddle off of the block. You need to recover and get into position to hit that ball, and that's gonna be easier if you're watching the entire path. And make sure to watch after it hits your side of the table as well to catch if it jumps up, down, or sideways. Alright everybody, so I'm going to go over some key takeaways that you should have gotten from today's lesson. So one would be to stay relaxed. I can't emphasize that enough. You need to stay relaxed when you're not hitting the ball. That way you don't have unnecessary tension um, and you just chunk onto the edge of your paddle whenever you hit the ball. And make sure that when you want to create power, you need to explosively accelerate upon contact with the ball. No earlier, no later. Also note that all of your acceleration needs to happen at the same time. So your body, your arm, everything has to accelerate instantaneously together. To do that, you also need to have weight transfer from your right foot to your left foot and push back off of your left foot back onto your right foot when you're done with the stroke. It seems kind of counterintuitive that you need to land onto your left foot, um, but trust me, your left foot acts as a counterbalance, so it, it pushes you back. And that's gonna help with your recovery, which is that third topic where you have to hit from the sweet spot and every single forehand. So you need to make sure you're recovering and moving into position
for each attack by watching the ball and how it's curving. All right, that's it for today. Uh, please let me know if you have comments or suggestions down below. I will try to get a better camera and a better audio mic because right now it's not that great, but next video should be better. All right, y'all, please comment and let me know what content you'd like to see for my next video. I can do another tutorial or a match analysis of a famous match. It's really open for discussion. Just wanna know what y'all would like to see. Thank you and see you next time.